We work with Russian elderly, medically ill, in a different stages of dementia. And on the top of all emotional spectrum of problems that elderly have, our population have an additional problems. They have, um, they survive the war and the Holocaust and the whole political, uh, political problems in former Soviet Union. They separated from the families. They have no language. And uh, so we work with their emotional problems as well as their memory problems. I will introduce to you Dr. Valentin Bregin, who is a psychiatrist, a founder, and a medical director of the Stress Relief Center. He will start with a part of the presentation, and then I will join him with the practical stuff. So now, Dr. Valentin Bregin. Hello. It's my pleasure to be here to share my experience working with patients with dementia. When I think about dementia, I'm thinking about three M's. Memory, movements, and mood. And dementia may start from any of them. This workshop is about dementia and movements. As you know, dementia is a whole body disease. It affects all organs and system in the body. And the more than five million Americans suffer from dementia, these numbers will be growing. This is an outline of our presentation. I will, I will briefly touch base about dementia, what we know today about dementia. Then I go to sensory motor activities and the brain activities in normal brain. Then we see the video of hand movements in people with dementia, moderate stage of dementia, and it will be practical part of the workshop. We do practical uh, and you work will get here. some experience to uh, implement this for your practical needs or for needs of your patients. Our knowledge of dementia goes far beyond of the plaques and tangles, which were described by Dr. Alzheimer's 100 years ago. Besides abnormal protein accumulation, we have neurotransmitters failures, brain atrophy, gait problems, abnormal brain blood flow, oxygen deficiency, and mitochondria. It is not a acute brain catastrophe, such as stroke or head trauma. We have two processes going on in the brain. One process is slowly decrease brain functions. Another process is the capping strategy which patient always developed. And we see in front of my your eyes, the patient developed capping mechanism, how to manage cognitive deficit. I did a brief search on PubMed recently about number of, number of publications related to these topics. And as you see, the number of publications related to carpus callosum, gait, hypoxia, and mitochondria failure is far lower than the others. However, these topics are in clinical work are very important, and we deal with these topics every day, with gait problems, falling, loss of coordinations, uh, hypoxia, agitation, and energy crisis. Cortical atrophy is well known in dementia. They see the left hemisphere is much more damaged than the right one. Corpus callosum atrophy is also very important and well known. The decrease of sickness of corpus callosum have a deep impact on brain functions, starting from 
gate in coordination problems and going to name recall. There were three national symposiums of gate problems and memory loss. And the balance and gate problems are easy, early signs of dementia. Blood flow. Blood flow changes in dementia. And there are a lot of places with hyperperfusion of cortex and particularly in subcortex, subcortex areas. White matter damage is well described in the literature and uh, our neurotransmitter centers lie in subcortical areas, not in cortical areas. They became also smaller. You can find on the internet the gallery of specs scans uh, done in different clinics and they're the same consistent of hyperperfusion areas which increases when pay dementia progresses. This picture of normal, normal vasculation. It will be a symposium in New York in May related to cerebral vasculature and dementia at New York Academy of Science. And the picture was taken from the, the promotional. You see the brain has completely different blood circulation system compared to the regular well-known artery and vein system in the whole body. And this is a lot of uh, interconnections and very dense cerebral distribution. During, during any tasks, physical and mental, cerebral blood flow change immediately towards the working places in the brain. Physical activities increase brain blood flow and make structural changes in the brain. Dr. Hauser's group found an increase in cerebral blood flow during the hand movements and chanting. Dr. Kawashima's groups found an increase in cerebral blood flow during different mental activities, which include reading aloud, writing, Dr. Kramer's group, and they found increased volume of frontal lobe after six months of the walking. Attention and memory, procedural memory particularly, highly connected to each other. We do movements, we need attention, and also we always use our procedural memory. 